Welcome to episode 50 of The Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Earth, the chief architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support experts in living well and doing good around the world, predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, all kinds of people that are getting really excited about the personal development industry, the health industry, the fitness industry, all kinds of industries that help you in becoming a better you. And do we have an expert here for you today? His name is Josh Kunanik. Thank you, James. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. It's an honor to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks for having me. This is Let's amazing. Let's get right into it, okay? Because I know it. you've had a journey. Before we get into you know, what you're doing now, we'd love to know a little bit about your past. Sure. Um, well, I'm 28 years old. Uh, I went to uh, Sault Ste. Marie in Northern Ontario when okay. I was 18 to pursue a teaching career. Nice. Um, I got my certification and you know it was an amazing opportunity for me to just discover who I was and to make something of myself. So you like tropical weather. <laughs> <laughs> Those who are familiar with Northern Ontario know that it can be pretty crazy with all that lake effect and everything. Yeah, 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 that's wild. And, and then what, you came back this way again? Yeah, so I was there for about six years or so, finished mm -hmm. my schooling and hung around for a little bit, mm -hmm. and I felt that it was definitely time for a change, both mentally, physically, mm -hmm. and, you know, developing new relationships. Mm -hmm. I felt like uh, the chapter had closed, so mm -hmm. to speak, and it was time to move on, so I moved down to Mississauga, and okay, I've good. been here for about three years. Nice, nice, very good, very good. And what was the, the, the main spark to kind of change directions? Uh, I was unhappy with my current situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I always try to think bigger and be more of a, per of a good person to help mm -hmm. people around me. And I felt like I needed to have a change of scene. I needed like a new perspective, mm -hmm. so to speak. So I decided to move to the city and give it a shot. Were you as healthy then as you are now? Because I know you're really into food and I know you're really into health and clean eating and chemical free, et cetera, and we'll get into that in a second. But back then, was that a consideration? No, I was just like most typical college students, you know, yep. I'd party on the weekends and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't really... I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really pay a lot of attention to what was going in my body and everything. Okay. Part of my experience in Northern Ontario was pursuing a culinary career. Amazing. I'm, I'm not a certified chef or anything like that. Mm -hmm. However, it, I was able to focus on the things that I was putting in my body, you know? Mm -hmm. And food was a way for me to manipulate my environment to mm -hmm. make sure that I started to make that change. I love it. You know what, uh, you know the Myers-Briggs, the, the test that you can take where it kind of puts you towards the, the top three careers of, yes. of choice? Yes. Uh, third for me was like sales guy kind of thing, sales -y. Second was officer in the milita military. And third was actually chef really? in, the, in the culinary space. Really? And I still have yet to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was some time ago. So I, I'm a huge foodie as myself and I, and I love, you know, nutrition, proper nutrition, having been a personal trainer and a nutrition specialist. Um, I'm a big fan of what you're doing. So let's talk a little bit about that and, and uh, about the body and what goes in, what goes out. And, you know, we are what we consume. We are too. Uh, Definitely. 
I was able to, like I said, learn to start manipulating my environment as far as what I could cook for myself at home, mm -hmm. cook for my friends and family. Uh, you don't have to just run to a fast food restaurant per se or to a convenience store to just you know fill your belly. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to plan ahead and it's important to constantly be developing those skills too. Mm -hmm. So you know I was able to take that to the next level and eventually put m myself on the journey of chemical free living. So that Amazing. was just kind of the preliminary step, so to speak. Is it is it difficult because I mean so many people are accustomed to, you know, coming out of college and doing the et cetera, what you just spoke of. Um, is it difficult being that first guy to do that? Is it difficult surrounding yourself with people that are of like mind, like state? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. You whatever you focus on in life does grow. So mm -hmm. if you focus on the people that will lift you up and will encourage uh, cooking or whatever it is for true, you, true. Um, then you can get to where you want to go. There's always going to be people who say, you know, maybe you should do this instead, or I don't think this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you believe it to be true, it will be true. It is. But it, I, I told myself, I forced myself to believe, it wasn't very hard, but um, that these opportunities do exist and these solutions do exist mm -hmm. and if you want them you can just reach out and grab them. So now what are you doing for others? What are you doing to share the mission, share the journey with others so they too live a life of like health and well-being like yourself? You know I, I leverage social media and I definitely do little things like host private cooking classes. I'm teaching oh, a few wow, people that's cool. how to you know just take care of themselves. Yeah. Basic meal prep is mm -hmm. very important. You know, mm -hmm. um, with a little bit of skill, watching a YouTube video, you can learn how to make a dish. It's amazing what you can say on YouTube now, eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the the thing that takes people to the next level, though, usually is meal prep. I find meal so, prep. So if you're able to explain, if you're able to plan three, four, five days ahead, mm -hmm. this is the only uh, skill basically that restaurants thrive on you can't just show up to work and say what do we need for today you mm -hmm. constantly have to be thinking three four five seven days ahead yeah you know be ready um, I prep this food it has this shelf life um, you know this is going to spoil at this date we have to incorporate this into this so if you can plan ahead especially for the people at home if they can plan ahead and you know, cook healthy foods and have access to them, it's a lot easier to make that decision. You don't have to open an empty fridge and say, oh, well, I guess I'll just get a pizza or something. Yeah. You know, if you have it ready and accessible, then... The know. likelihood of you, exactly. you know, getting involved with that particular healthier eating is, exactly. is much, much higher. Yeah. And uh, we're all guilty of it, you know, and, course, and convenience, you know, and going, grabbing what's easy and we're all living a fast, busy life, you know, and when you have that preparation, I usually prep uh, Wednesdays and Sundays, mm -hmm. right? So I'll prep for, you know, on Sunday for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Sunday's actually my, my cheat day. I'll kind of take off a little bit. Six days on, one day off. But exactly what you're saying, uh, I, I love salads, right? Yeah. So I do a lot of different types of salads that I got ready to go three days worth, put them in little Tupperware, put them into the fridge, away you go. It's that easy if you just take the effort to do that. I mean, it is. If you do this every single day, you know, it might take you 15 or 20 minutes a day to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you just spend an extra five minutes maybe and do a bulk prep, so to speak. Bingo. Then you just saved yourself all that time that you can focus on your hobbies, your passions, and whatever. Now let's talk about essential oils. Sure. Because I, I know you're a huge fan. Raving fan. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. You know, I, I see kind of your evolution and, and where you're going with it. But I would love for you to maybe share with the audience a little bit about what are essential oils and, and, and you know, the, the basic you know, description of what you're involved with. Sure. Um, there are many grades of essential oils. It's a highly competitive market, but when we're talking about ones that can benefit you the most, it's very important to consider what's called therapeutic or medical grade uh, oils. So these are ones that have no toxins in them, no fillers, and they're definitely, uh, th these are the things that have the most advantage to your body. There's a lot of amazing properties. I mean, I don't have to get into it now. However, by incorporating these into your diet, it's basically like putting jet fuel in your body. It gives your body exactly what it needs on a nutritional basis to thrive and to excel. Now, if somebody wanted to learn more like on a one-to-one -one kind of thing, how do they actually find you? They can find me on social media, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
and I often host classes as well. Um, for both, for culinary and for, for uh, the essential oils? For culinary, but I am focusing a lot on teaching 101 classes and mm -hmm. chemical-free home classes. So oh, that's cool. we spend a lot of time thinking about what we're eating and exercising and all that, which is fantastic. But a lot of people don't necessarily look at what is in their environment. They mm. could be like cleaning products. Like cleaning stuff. products, exactly. Okay, so wow. they could be using toxins in their environment without even knowing it. Mm. And to no fault of their own. But if you do a little research and understand how dangerous some of these things can be to your health, mm -hmm. then the decision is very easy for you to make. That's awesome. I am very grateful for you coming on the show today, Josh. Thank you very much. We will see you around. Absolutely. This is the Dynamo Show. This is episode 50. I am James Ert, your host, and stay tuned for our next guest, who will be right up. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. This is episode 50, and I am your show host, James Ert. We are about to speak to a gentleman, a dear, dear friend of mine, who is also an expert in the scene, Mr. Gagging Gotra. It's an honor to have you on nice the to show. Meet you, man. Nice to meet you. So let, let's get right into it. Let's talk a little bit about your past, you know, kind of how we got here, and, uh, you know, any maybe challenges oh. that you overcame. Uh, how we got here. Um, I remember I was, I was just here about two months ago, actually, for uh, the Dynamo Speaking Challenge for one of my buddies, Armin Shafi. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, he committed over here, and uh, fortunately, he's actually the, the champion as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Armin Shafi, I met him a couple months ago. Um, I started a charity called the Six Seva. I love it. Uh, so what we do is um, we go in a variety of cities mm -hmm. every three months, and uh, we do charity events. We provide clothing, nourishment, health Beautiful. and hygiene products and uh, education and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I needed an MC for my event and then I, I, gave, I called him up and he was willing to do it. It was Christmas time and New Year's. He, you know, he, you know, he, wanted, he wanted to help out. So he came out, um, ended up being a great event and we connected after that again. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we did that, we started coming up with uh, the whole seminar gig, the Reborn seminar gig, yeah. which uh, we all spoke about. I was there. Exactly. It was, it was really, it was, really it was, good it was event. Crazy. It was Amazing crazy. It was event. Yeah. And um, like that, I got in touch with him. And uh, when that happened, we started to grow together. And it's, all these opportunities started to fall on my lap. And uh, since he was actually competing over here, that was just, I was a part of the audience. And yeah. where you called me up, and you were asking a question of who helps minors and, and, and children and women. Yeah. And I raised up my hand, and uh, I was fortunate to call, be called up on stage by you. And uh, yeah, that's why I ended up over here. So would right. you say that's your like number one drive in life right now, is your charity? Uh, well, OK, my number one drive in life is uh, to bring out my best potential and be the best self that I can. That, that I can. Um, see, in life, it, it works like this. What you give is what you will get back, mm -hmm. right? And um, so, if you like, if life, if you if you are the your, your best self in life, mm -hmm. life will reward you with joy, happiness, and abundance. True. And it's worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, I've started doing what I love, and mm -hmm. I started doing things for passionately for others instead of myself mm -hmm. instead because it's all about it's karma is not always bad karma is always mm -hmm. good too so do good for others good will happen to you mm -hmm. um which is what i started doing as well and then i started i stopped being a little selfish mm -hmm. uh and i started giving back more and a lot started coming back to me I love and it. it was abundance and you know i started finding love i started better better relationships better mm -hmm. surroundings better friends mm -hmm. It's wicked. I love how the universe works. And that's, that's great that you're in the better. Before you got into the better and the change and the paradigm shift and the charity, um, what were you doing? Um, I wasn't saying my life was bad, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was in a different field. Um, I went to school for, uh, for a mechanical program. Okay. And um, I'm a hands-on type of guy, mm -hmm. but uh, that was when I was young. And I, I, you know, I was a youngster, mm -hmm. and I liked what I did then. But mm -hmm. as I grew up and I matured up a little more, I started realizing that money is not really the number one factor in life, you know what I mean? Money mm -hmm. doesn't really make, bring out happiness. And um, as I grew up, I'm like, I don't want to wake up in the morning and then go to a job or do something that I get, I get paid a lot, but I'm not satisfied and I don't have a smile on my face doing. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather wake up in the morning and do something that I, that I love, mm -hmm. yet not get paid as much if that's the case. Mm -hmm. um, so I left the whole mechanical field uh, like behind me 
and that's when I connected up with Arm. You missed it at all? No. Not at all. Eh? No, man, coming home all greased yeah. up, all hands uh, dirty. No, forget man, about no, it, eh? no, forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't really wear a suit and a tie under a truck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then I left all that behind, and I started getting into sales, and I started, and as soon as I started getting into sales, I started meeting professional people. Not that saying that mechanics aren't professional, it's just like in the field that I different wanted to get in, a yeah. different profession, right? Yeah. And um, I started meeting with those kind of people, and I uh, started surrounding myself with, uh, with them, and which I started to prosper a lot. Um, I have the opportunity, actually, as well, to become one, be one of the co-authors in the Dynamo Diaries for your I book as well. It. I love actually, it. Which is great stuff. I love it. And, um, which I'm really looking forward to, actually. And, um, and uh, with Armin as well, like, it's, it's great working with, with, with people that have your, that have same, uh, same goal and same vision as you, because it's easier, it's not easier, but it's more comfortable and more, um, you're more ambitious, you're more confident, and you're more... You inspire each other. Inspire, exactly, you're right. more inspired Everybody by Everybody inspires each other exactly. to do more, be more, give more. Exactly. Yeah, and as a community, you know, magic happens. Yeah, the, like, yeah. if a bunch of those people are together, they make, you, already, you only know it's only magic, right? Amazing. Amazing. After that. Where do you see Gagan in, let's say, like, five years? Uh, five what's years the, from... What's the picture, the vision board? Uh, for six, well, I would say for, uh, for six, it's, it's exactly itself. Um, we're starting this... Uh, this I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the ice bucket challenge. Yeah, right? no way. So yeah. we're starting this, uh, this thing called rack challenge. So it's a random act of kindness. Nice. So what we will, we will be doing, and I'll get to a limit in, in the next five years. Um, but so in the next five or six, we're going to be feeding at least minimum of 50,000 bellies. Mm -hmm. uh, we're starting also this program called uh, Back to Life. Cool. Being said, um, so every charity event that we do, mm -hmm. we're going to be selecting a couple of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, to make it fair, we're going to, we'll have a, like a, some sort of a game, mm -hmm. and then the top 15 or 20 winners will get selected because to, to make it fair, right? Um, mm -hmm. We don't want them to feel left out or like they're any, any, any less. Mm -hmm. So by, with those selectors, what we would do is we would provide them two months of shelter, nice. uh, clothing, meals, education. Our volunteers would sit down with them and conversate with them, ask them the hobbies, and their interests and whatnot. Mm -hmm. build job profiles for them, get them job interviews lined up, and um, also give them, like, after, get them interviews, get them jobs. Mm -hmm. And once they do that, we can't just let them go all by, them, by themselves again and let, be independent. So we would still support them about, like, we would still give them financial support and, like, clothing and, like, shelter and whatnot mm -hmm. until they're fully able to, like, stand on their own feet themselves and go on from That's there. That's amazing. Now, our audience is quite large, so if you were to share with them maybe a little bit about how they can help you and or Six Seva. Uh, well, by all means, uh, you guys don't necessarily, I would love to work with you guys, uh, or anybody as well, to impact lives, but um, to generally impact a life, you guys don't necessarily be, need to be a part of a charity or work with somebody itself. Um, the smallest thing as asking someone how they're doing on, on, on a daily basis, or even if you're walking down the street and you just see anyone, no matter even if they have a smile, just ask them how they're doing, because you never know, that smile may just, be a, may just be a mask over their face, and that person might just be devastated in their life and feeling that nobody cares. And when somebody does ask, oh, how you're doing, or how's your day going, they feel some sort of love and uh, an attachment with that person, because they feel like, oh, someone does care, and it's happened. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what, what that bridge in San Francisco. What's it called? Um, the Golden Gate. The Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. Um, it's known as a suicide point, mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, people that have survived the suicides. The, uh, I've read a statistic. Mm -hmm. They said that they regretted the, the decision that, that the moment that they jumped off the the bridge, they, they regretted it because they only felt like that nobody cared. Mm -hmm. They said that if somebody asked us how we're doing or mm -hmm. about how about how we feel, mm -hmm. we would have seen our decision. We would mm -hmm. have made that decision, mm -hmm. and that's what really hit me. I'm like. I will do whatever it takes to either save a life or make a life better, mm -hmm. or in, in any way that I can. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like, like that's my number Inspire one. Inspire the world just by what you're doing. You yeah, know, people you know that, that maybe hear this story will want to go out and start their own charities. I, I really hope you so. Know, or connect and collaborate with charities. Yeah, like just you do know? anything that you can in any way. Do you guys have a website as well? Uh, we don't have a website, but it's, it's, it's currently in, it's currently building uh, as Very we cool. speak. Um, but we do have an Instagram page. It's called the Six Seva. Mm -hmm. uh, T H E. S I X S E V A on Instagram. So please give, give us a, a ch check us out on that too. I know we were talking about forgiving earlier. Like, talk talk to me about that. Because <coughs> I know you have some pretty key points about that. Forgiving. Um, never hold a grudge against anyone. Um, because I feel like, let's say for example, me and you, are, you know, we're friends, and uh, we have we get into this conflict, 
And um, for any instance, worst case scenario, something happens to you or wh whatever it is, and I leave, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this, this problem against you, but I'm not gonna hurt you. It might, I may not even tell you about it. It's not gonna hurt you, it's gonna hurt my, myself from the mm -hmm. inside because I feel like I have a negative relationship with, with someone. You carry that and poison. Exactly, and mm -hmm. I don't know when's gonna be the last time I meet you. That might have been the last time I met you. Mm -hmm. And I would never wanna end off a relationship with anyone in a negative point. Maybe if that person went to the bridge. You know, exactly, maybe that person went to the bridge. Right. And I don't want me knowing that that was my last moment with that person, mm -hmm. or that person, or me being the reason why that person became, uh, became suicidal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So just forgiving what it is, just always, always give love, always do not hold grudges. Um, forgive and forget. Um, just, yeah, man, just always. Just, Wonderful you know. words, man. Wonderful words. You know what I mean? The power of love. Love is the way. Love is strong, you know, man. The light. Love is strong. Love sharing will. the light, sharing the love, sharing kindness. You know, I've been actually following, uh, you know, a very Zen type tradition from my journeys over in Southeast right. Asia, a lot of Buddhism type philosophies, not necessarily being Buddhist, but understanding that it is the religion of kindness and love and compassion and applying a lot of that in my own life and my own journey. So I commend you on what you're doing. I'm excited to see what 6-7 is going to be up to over the next few years. And oh, you'd, you'd be surprised. I love it. Things happen. All right, man. Very good. Very Thank good, you for man. coming on the show. This is The Dynamo Show. This is episode 50. Stay tuned right after this short commercial break. We'll be right back with our next guest. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. This is a very special episode. It is our 50th show. And we are about to talk to another expert. I'm a big, big, big fan of her. Linda Spencer, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Yes. I love your tattoos, me. by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm about to get tats. I guess to uh, yeah. put some money down on some yeah. sleeves. I actually start tomorrow for my very That's first tat. Awesome. So I'm excited. I was like looking at yours. I got my first yours. one when I was 35. 35, yeah. yeah. yeah I, so I'm 45, so I'll be getting go. my first at 45. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It must be yeah. a liberating feeling. It was. It yeah. was. What do they mean to you? What are they? Um, just out of curiosity. Every one of them has a meaning. Um, yeah. I actually designed them all myself. Nice. So I have dream. Believe is the uh, word yeah. and the name and of my uh, dream on this first one. song. Very cool. And this one was when I was married. Yeah. Uh, that's my husband's wedding band. Yeah. And then these are about family. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very, so very I nice. Them all and I you going to do like others. the whole body kind of no, thing? No. I know? have a couple on my back, so they yeah. take up a whole lot of real estate. I heard they're mildly addictive. Mildly. Yeah. Very mildly. Uh, I actually go, when I was getting them, I would go as a means of relaxing. Yeah. Because it re releases a whole bunch of endorphins and everything mm -hmm. else. And a couple of them I fell asleep. Oh, really? Believe it or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're absorbing the pain versus repelling it. It wasn't that painful. So no? pain's all relative. So it is. It, it, it's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. So let's talk about maybe some of the pains in life. Let's talk about some of the, some the, the big aha moments in the life. story. You know, let's, let's go back oh, wow. a few years and maybe start at the beginning. Start at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> way, way back. Way, way back in the hamlet back, of. Way back in the hamlet of, of Glen <laughs> Williams, where I'm from. Uh, actually, originally from a little town in the eastern townships in Quebec. And, okay. And. Uh, Grew up on a farm there, mm -hmm. beef farm, very, very modest means. So okay. talk about uh, poor life. Um, but it, it was a way of life. So I didn't even think of farming as anything mm -hmm. like a business or anything. You didn't it was know just, any different when Didn't you know anything kid. different. I yeah. grew up, I was spent my 19 years of my life there. And mm -hmm. so. And were you working in the farm as well? You were, yes, I guess yes, from the time does, I was right? five. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I had a job from the time yeah. I was five. So what, like cattle? Uh, cattle farming, yeah. yeah, and so there was a lot of hay, a lot yeah. of uh, fencing to do, feeding the cows, chores mm -hmm. every morning, you'd be up at 5 o'clock, 5.30, mm -hmm. uh, go down and help do the chores before going to school, mm -hmm. come back from school, go do the chores before doing homework and all this. What a different world farming was back then compared to now, eh? Yeah, a little bit different. Yeah. I think uh, there's still, I mean, there's a whole lot more technology, a whole lot more equipment that mm -hmm. goes into farming these days. But where I'm from, they still use a lot of the old school stuff. It's okay. not progressed yeah. that far. It's still yeah. a, lot, a small farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right on. So talk to us a little bit about maybe like your schooling and, and you know, what was the, what did you want to be when you were a little what girl? I to, it was so interesting. I wanted to be a teacher. 
I went to take care of kids. I was a really, really good student and amazing in math, straight A's. Okay. Straight right A's. On. So that led me into um, it led me into accounting. Yeah. So I became a chartered accountant. That's exciting. It, Yes, well, it was for me, but awesome. for a lot of people, you would think that it's not. Yeah. <laughs> but it was for me. I really loved the numbers, and I wanted to teach them. And uh, then through my schooling for accounting, I got in touch. I, I was exposed to the tax side of things. Okay, okay. And then I really fell in love with getting into the law. Nice. And tax law and being able to translate it into a way that people could understand. Which is key. Which is phenomenal. Because most don't. No, exactly, right. exactly. So most are for afraid me, afraid of it. You know, well, they're afraid way. of it. They're afraid, afraid of, the of dealing with uh, the tax authorities, where they're just doing their job. Yeah. And so, being that relationship liaison or that liaison between the tax authorities and the clients was really cool. Yeah. And tax was a way for me to help my clients on a go-forward basis, as opposed to looking at things historically. Mm -hmm. And so that was really cool because I wanted to help them. I wanted to help them save money, and I wanted to help reduce their stress. Yeah, and it can be stressful. Very you know, stressful. Very stressful. You know? um, and people lose their lives. They lose their businesses. Um, they can lose their homes. Their marriages. Their marriages because of the tax troubles that they get into. Mm -hmm. So it's for me. It was all about relieving that stress. Now, do you do any like workshops or seminars around it? Uh, not on the tax anymore. I did mm. when I was in public accounting. I, I ran a lot of um, of the training for the CA firm that I worked for. Okay. And also when I moved into the corporate world, I did a, a road show to teach and and expose the other groups of the business mm -hmm. what they were doing and how what they were doing was impacting the tax yeah. of the company yeah, yeah. and vice versa. So we became very good friends and and I worked very, very, very closely with all the different uh, departments and groups in business. That's cool. Which was phenomenal. Very mm -hmm. cool. And mm -hmm. does that relate to a lot to what you do now? Absolutely. Yeah, I Absolutely. guess it's part of the journey, it's right? It's part of the journey. Well. And if you'd asked me 20 years ago or even five years ago if I would get in, if, if I would be doing what I'm doing right now, I didn't even know this existed on yeah. the money coaching side of things and yeah. being a business. I had no clue. Yeah. I had no clue. Yeah. And you obviously love it, but before we actually get into yes. the business side of it, I know you went through some challenges, you know, with your marriage and I stuff did. like that. Like a lot of us, I went through yep. the same thing. Yep. Care to share with us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, I met my husband when I was 16. Oh wow! So we were together. High school sweetheart. High school sweet. He he yeah. was beyond high school. He was okay. working full time. He was four years older than I was at the mm -hmm. time. Or, was he also into farming? No, no. He was here from Toronto. Okay. Born and raised in, okay. in the Toronto area. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and that's why you came out this way. That's why I came out this way in the first okay. place. So gotcha. I met him through my cousin. Yeah. Uh, when I was still living in Quebec and we got really close and hit it off and I had to make a choice whether I wanted to stay in Quebec. Yeah. Uh, I could have had a full scholarship to go to university there but I chose to come here yeah. to Toronto and make my life here with him and I mean it, it's still like every every marriage, every love you start off and you, you think it's going to last forever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then things change. It's Things true. change. People change, and you Especially either from 16 on. Exactly. I didn't right. know who I was. Yeah. Really, really, I was very naive, um, mm -hmm. innocent, protected little girl, mm -hmm. and growing up on a farming community in Quebec was never exposed to any of yeah. the, the things in, in in life or in in the world. So, as we progressed through our marriage, I mean, we had two wonderful boys and and we did love each other but as I decided how old are the boys now they're yeah. 14 and 11 okay okay they're okay. Uh, they're amazing yeah. and grow like weeds and yeah are into yeah. BMX and oh cool right <laughs> love on. to right race on. so they love the extreme sports they love the extreme sports and yeah. being outside and, and awesome. getting their hands dirty yeah, I saw that on your Facebook yeah. page yeah the, the BMX stuff <laughs> and I'm a huge extreme sports fan yes. and I watch so a lot of the X Games you'll see that all summer long for me uh, yeah. they actually have a race I'm a this massive weekend. X Games fan and you yes. know, I was heavy into skateboarding cool I was a, cool. I was a skater but a very similar lifestyle yes yeah, yeah. it's that extreme and, yeah. and doing tricks oh yeah anything the trick the landing the trick Getting uh -huh. the trick, nailing uh -huh. the trick. Going fast. Going really fast. And they're in yeah. racing, so it's really about going fast and getting those jumps and yeah. and going through. I actually it. got into mountain bike racing, so 
that's kind of close. It's kind of close, but it was a, a little bit different, a yeah. little bit uh, differently dangerous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> After a few broken bones. Have the kids broken any bones? Not yet. Oh, good. Thankfully, yes. Yeah, thankfully, yeah, that's but good. Uh, Very lucky. I see it all the I broke time. Broke a few things. <laughs> I see it all the time. A lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between that and snowboarding. Yeah. Uh, did you do any sports when you were growing up? Not a lot. Uh, I was not a very coordinated child, so okay. I was a very much on an artist. Okay. I loved art. I did yeah. all of the painting, arts and sculpting. crafts, painting, doing crafts, uh, drawing, and writing. Okay. I was a huge writer. Yeah, I and I know do. you. Uh, you did some blogging. I did. You know, blogs. and you had that one blog post about the farming. You know how it led to entrepreneurship. Yeah, Care to yeah. touch on that? So, I, it was interesting because as a I never thought about farming as entrepreneurship mm -hmm. until quite recently, actually. And then I thought about it. It's like all those tools and and things that I learned and skills that I learned growing up on the farm, being mm -hmm. really resourceful, because as a farmer, you have to yeah. use this, the all tools and the things that Everything. you have available to you, because there's That's not right. a lot of money, right? Yeah. And if things break, you have to learn how to fix them it's yourself. A good skill. And, and uh, being resilient and just putting in the work. You think. Nature has this thing of it's it's all interconnected and mm -hmm. harmoniously interconnected and and farming is very much like that where mm -hmm. everything is connected together yep. and you just do you just right go for it. you just you just wake up and you know there's things that you got to do yep. and then you go to bed and you wake up and you do it again and you go to bed and you wake up and you do it again I love and it. so it's really cool to bring that skill into the world of business. The entrepreneurial world. Yes. <laughs> very, very cool. Well, thank you for sharing. This is the Dynamo Show. Stay tuned. We will be back with Linda Spencer after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert. I'm sitting here with the lovely Linda Spencer, and we are going to talk about money, relationship, coaching. Yes. Okay. Tell us money. how you got into that. Money, relationship, coaching. It's something that uh, I never even knew existed uh, before a couple of years ago. Um, and I got into it really with finding my own business coach and learning how to do my own business mm -hmm. and healing some of the things that the money issues and money stories I had yeah. through my marriage and had adopted as a child and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, this is a really good tool and a really good work, a piece of work to be bringing to my clients and mm -hmm. to the world because I see I see so many struggles. I, see, mm -hmm. I mean, my clients are... There's a lot of familiarity there. Right. Yeah. And my clients are entrepreneurs. And mm -hmm. I can I listen to their stories and I listen to how they're struggling. You focus mostly on entrepreneurs or all, only mostly on entrepreneurs? Mostly on entrepreneurs. That's your target demographic, yeah, you would say? Yeah, mostly entrepreneurs. I do yeah. have a lot of people... I mean, a lot of people were asking me to, if as employees, if I would come in and mm -hmm. help them. And I said, of course. Yeah. So I started developing programs for people yeah. other than mm -hmm. entrepreneurs as well. And really, it's money relationship. We don't think of money as a relationship, right? We think of it as this thing and this necessary evil of life. But mm -hmm. really, if we thought of it as a separate entity and, and something to nurture and grow with, yeah. it would relieve so much stress that we have totally. around money. And money is the number one stress factor in North America. Mm -hmm. So to take that out and think of and, and think of ways to change our mindsets and change mm -hmm. the way that we think of money and how we do it, it just opens up a whole new ball game. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you know, your parents were like this. You know, I, I have you know, Central European parents that grew up through the war, right. and there's a lot of money scarcity there. There's yes. a lot of you know, uh, mental blockages around that, and you know, we're not about the money, or, or you know, just how, how they treat a penny is very differently than you know, people do in Absolutely. this day and age, and they just don't get it. And even my father, I've always had some challenges and struggles with that up until just recently, where you know, I, I, I knew how to make money, mm -hmm. Uh, but I still didn't really understand 
the, the, the proper love relationship that you can have with it. You almost looked at it as uh, uh, something that you resist, you know, or exactly. you do resist it without even really knowing exactly. it. So then I, I actually heard from a, a wise friend of mine, uh, why don't you look at money like you would your lovely significant other? Exactly. So if you were holding like $10,000 in your hand, treat it as if you would your significant other in a loving relationship. Yes. You love it, you pay attention to it, you nurture it, you, 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 you do things with it, you allow it exactly. to grow, you allow it to blossom. And if you turn your back on it, what's it going to do? Like a good woman or a good man or a good significant other, that person is going to leave. It's, it's the, the same, same thing with, with money. Exactly. Right? Exactly. What you and that's focus what I on teach. expands. And what you focus on expands. What you pay attention yeah. to grows. So, th and and that's what I say in my uh, with my clients is, what if you treated money as a person? Yeah. And if you were treating it, if you think about how you're treating money now, yeah. really think about it, and then think about money as a person. Would that person would that person ever want to be with you? Would you say the same thing? Would you say the same things? Right. And it's amazing how people shift instantaneously when I ask them that question. That's, that's a that's a great it's tool. Amazing. That's yeah. a great tool. Where do you see Linda in like five years with your business? Oh wow! <laughs> What's the future behold? <laughs> you know, we don't predict the future, but I certainly uh, see really big things. I see the world changing um, in how they think about money and, and being able to bring this line of work mm -hmm. to the world and being international with it, and really changing the face of how people do money. Mm -hmm. Across the globe, especially here in North America, I mean, we don't, we're not taught about money in school. No, right? Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> Never mind money relationships. I'm gonna ask a money person. Why right. is that? What What is your theory behind that? Because everybody has a different theory. I think it was just something that was just it was never thought of. It was never thought of. People are thinking of even it though now. it's the most important thing. Exactly. Ever. <laughs> it's, it touches every aspect of our lives. It does, right. Yeah. It affects how we live, it affects how our health is, mm -hmm. it affects our relationships. How we give back. How we give back. So I think of, I look at finance as a holistic thing, so mm -hmm. it's not just money, it's your whole health and yeah. and how everything is connected together. It's all together. interconnected, you know, like right? the farm. So, exactly. <laughs> um, so why isn't money taught in schools? I don't know if it's a Canadian thing because I hear in other countries it is, or mm -hmm. at least it's being brought into schools in other mm -hmm. countries. Even in Canada, other provinces are already on it. Mm -hmm. Ontario seems to be the last one to be catching yeah. the boat. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're just starting now. It's interesting, like even a, a friend of mine from the US, Grant Cardone, um, he does the, the book 10X, right? So yes. he, he was just having a, a, a little podcast about um, how selfish it is when you go around saying, you're not about money or, or you don't you're not doing this for money you know when it's your responsibility to be rich he says it's your responsibility to make it so you can have positive on. impact to pay it forward to build intergenerational wealth Absolutely. to give back to charity to make your community better to give to your church whatever it is that's close and dear to your heart but when you're not about that you can't do any of it exactly and what I like to say is um, the more money you make, the more good that you can do in the world. Yeah, people that and have a big heart are going to give more. Exactly. So right? money doesn't change you. A lot of people think no, that, well, if I make a lot of true. money, it's going to change who I am. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. If you're mm -hmm. a good person, a good person with money is only going to be able to do more good. It's so and true. And just look at you. Well, you know, what? it's <laughs> interesting because I went through my own paradigm shifts, you know. I, I'm working towards my third million right yes. now. The first two times, I w wasn't able to save it. Right? I wasn't able to invest it properly because I just wasn't aware. I know how to make it. Right. You know, the first million took me 900000 to yeah. get there. So it's not about what you made. It's about what you saved exactly. and managed to invest yeah. properly. Yeah. So it turns into a golden goose versus yes. just the golden goose egg. Yes. Right. So I know how to make those <laughs> eggs very clearly, but then the goose disappears. Yeah. So now I'm working on my third and hopefully only spending, you know, a little bit of money on a phone that I can operate my entire business globally yeah. around yeah. and reduce the expenses because the expenses are the killer. It is. Right? It is. And if we look at Canadians today spending 1.68 times what they make and, and having that consumer debt, yeah. it is. It's looking at those expenses and really knowing what your numbers are mm -hmm. and tracking them. 
so you can you make the, the law of attraction. Decisions. I know you're a fan. Yes. Right. So it, it's interesting because when I when I started, you know, really understanding it and and living it in each and every moment, I turned that tithing model of what was supposed to be 10 percent. You know, that's taught in a lot of you know religions yes. and schools and yes. cultures, giving that back. Imagine challenging yourself or others to give back 90. What happens? And getting to that space. That 10 percent, okay, is turning out to be more than my old 90. Exactly. That's exactly. Crazy. It's a journey, right? And that's like a leap. You, it, you can't do it overnight. No. There's a journey to get there. But There's then a journey once of state, right? Yeah, There's a journey of state. And then different. once you're there, yeah. to be able to give back 90% of what you're making, that's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, the, so. the, the, the goal, the goal that you know, I had from a very young age was to give the biggest donation ever in the history of the world. So I'm following closely Bill and Melinda Gates yeah, and Warren Buffett yeah. and what they're doing and all the magic that they do. And then following people like Bono and Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, Leonardo and DiCaprio, okay. all these people that Branson take their and fame and, mm -hmm. and they do something wonderful for Absolutely. and with the world because they know and understand how money works. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And once you know that and you have a good relationship with it, it comes. It just it does. You, you allow it to flow. It does. Allow yeah. it to flow. Just keep the flow going. <laughs> keep right? the flow. Money <laughs> loves to flow. It loves yeah. attention and it likes to flow. So keeping it in a, in your mattress is not allowing it to flow. So maybe a few final words, you know, for our audience. Share Absolutely. maybe two, three nuggets of wisdom about money two, three and minutes. or how they can find Linda. Uh, yeah, you know what? There's three. I want to share three really good tips with with your money relationship. It really comes down to um, having awareness. So awareness of how you your money behaviors in the first place and how you make decisions, um, what you're spending your money on, and how you're making it. Mm -hmm. uh, then acquiring the knowledge and the know-how to know what to do with it and so to important. make those changes that you need to make in order to be able to get back 90% and, and let that 10% con continue to grow. And the third key is mindset. Because you can have all the awareness in the world and you can have all the know-how in the world, but until you change your money mindsets, mm -hmm. things aren't gonna change. You're gonna continue to be in that lack and struggle mentality. Truth. Absolutely. Linda Spencer. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is the Dynamo Show. This was episode 50, a milestone for us. Thank you so, so much for tuning in, and we will see you on episode 51.